Hello and welcome to If You Love This Planet. My special guest today is Vladimir Wurtelecki, the founder and chairman of the Department of Medical Genetics and Birth Defects Center of the University of South Alabama in the USA. Prior to his training in medical genetics at Harvard University Medical School, he trained in pediatrics and at St. Louis Children's Hospital, Washington University. Dr. Wurtelecki is a diplomat of the American Board of Pediatrics and member of the Academy of Pediatrics, and since 1994, he has served as Secretary-Treasurer of the World Alliance for the Prevention of Birth Defects. Dr. Vladimir Wurtelecki, welcome to If You Love This Planet. Well, thank you very much. And I believe you and I trained at Children's Hospital Medical Center at Harvard, but we were not there at the same time. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yes. Well, I was fascinated by a recent paper that you had published in the Journal of Pediatrics called Malformations in a Chernobyl-Affected Area. And you are a teratologist, which means you examine birth defects and very little is known or discussed about what is happening in the area around Chernobyl post-accident. And if you would, would, I would like you to explain to this audience what you are seeing in this area amongst the babies that are being born there since the accident. Well, <clears throat> congenital malformations uh, are many and uh, have many causes. And there are two ways to approach the question uh, whether there is a connection between Chernobyl and congenital malformation. <clears throat> the usual way is for measurements of how much radiation uh, is there and the other way is to measure the other extreme, and that is, are there any consequences that could be due to radiation? The first approach of measuring radiation is expensive, and there are virtually no standards that are applicable to the unborn. Most standards of radiometry, which is the measurement of radiation, are based on adults. And it is well known that the unborn or the child is 10 to 20 times, if not more, sensitive to the same amount of radiation than an adult. <clears throat> so our resources and capacity was more attuned to measuring consequences. Therefore, we initiated a what's called population monitoring. That means every baby born is actively uh, explored whether there are or there are any developmental problems with that particular child. And since congenital malformations are many and they are relatively rare, our plan was to do so over a span of 10 years in order to be able to accumulate sufficient data. And this is what we did. And as we were doing this, within two, three years, it was obvious that the rates of spina bifida and other defects of the nervous system uh, were many folds greater than expected. <clears throat> and so we wrote the report and continued. And the next... Uh, Two years or so later, we began to notice an excess of conjoined twins, or what people call Siamese twins, and these were born in one of five different provinces, so that around this particular province, there are very few of such births, while all of them are occurring in this narrower area. So we then <clears throat> emphasized studies in that particular province. And as we went on, uh, we began to notice other nervous system problems, mainly a reduced head size, which is called microcephaly, 
And again, this disorder is very complicated, has many causes, and one has to be extremely cautious not to uh, misinterpret such sort of data. So we continued uh, plodding along, and after completing 10 years of studies, we published a report. And in essence, what the report says is that there is an excess of the frequency of anomalies of the nervous system and, in addition, these conjoined twins uh, in not the whole province, but particularly in the northern half of this province. Now, this northern half happens to be a unique ecology niche. It is a region of swamps, of wetlands, of forests. And furthermore, they have, this area has been the habitat of a unique population that Ukraine recognizes as distinct, as an ethnic uh, different group. And they have been there since recorded history, and they live in very small villages, very isolated, and relying completely on wild foods and locally produced foods, all of which are radioactive. The soils in that particular area of Ukraine are so different that plants absorb about 20 times as much radioactivity as the same plant growing, let's say, 50 miles away, uh, where the soils are richer in humus and other minerals. <clears throat> so consequently, people living in this northern half are absorbing or what's called incorporating in their body much higher levels of radiation than, than let's say, people living somewhere else. So this was one of the triggers to report these findings. Now, of course, these congenital anomalies of the nervous system can be due to other factors. For instance, uh, spina bifida can be due to folic acid deficiency or bad diets or lack of micronutrients. So it is very difficult and complicated and expensive to tease out specific causes on the basis of what's called a epidemiology study. What we have done is a descriptive epidemiology study. Now, this cannot prove cause. It only can prove a difference between point A and point B. Now that we have done this, we have ideas exactly how to do follow-up studies oriented to study cause, because we already know how to focus our attention. We know which villages uh, are of particular interest, which anomalies are of particular interest, and so on. So that's a long answer, and I will elaborate as you, okay. as you uh, indicate. Well, the other cause, of course, of microcephaly, as you point out in your article in Pediatrics, Dr. Wertelecki, is alcoholism um, in the mother. Yes. Well, we, you know, we established OmniNet in Ukraine, which is a consortium. It's an international not-for-profit consortium, probably one of the first registered in Ukraine. Ukraine has been essentially independent very few years. It had to invent a constitution, had to invent rules and laws and modus operandi. But be that as it may, um, we, that OmniNet is a partner of the International Initiative on Fetal Alcohol Syndrome. Consequently, six universities joined us in studies of alcohol. And these well-funded studies of alcohol, incidentally, and these very substantial, well-funded, very expert studies of alcohol consumption by pregnant women and the offspring they have definitively show that the use of alcohol 
for the exposure of the unborn to alcohol in this northern part of that particular province is not only not higher, it is actually statistically significant less frequent. Oh, that's interesting. So we, we can say with confidence that whatever the factors are, and we suspect radiation is a major one, alcohol does not explain this particular excess of neural system anomalies yes. in the northern part. Now, I have another question. I know that children are 10 to 20 times more vulnerable to the mutagenic effects of radiation than adults, but I have heard that fetuses in the first trimester are about a 1,000 times more vulnerable and sensitive. Is that so or not so, Dr. Wirtelecki? Well, those are, those are extrapolations from non-human studies and uh, tissue cultures. There is virtually no human-based uh, evidence in this regard. And uh, it's very difficult to obtain. The most, uh, I say, prudent approach is to essentially admit that we do not have answers for the questions of fetus embryo, virtually none. And that's why th this particular population is so interesting and so important, mm. because now we have a third generation of people exposed to radiation since their birth. Mm. Or since and, their conception. Since before their conception. So in other words, women that were, um, let's say, 16 years old at the time of Chernobyl, mm. uh, they, uh, let's say, were impacted by radiation. And if their tissue mutated, then they could have breast cancer and other cancers. Mm. But in their abdomen, even if they were not pregnant, they had oocytes, and these oocytes underwent mutations as well. So when they became pregnant, let's say in 1999, and had a baby in the year 2000, the egg that produced that baby and the sperm that produced that baby were exposed as well. Yes. And the baby was exposed since conception and so on and so on. Well, those babies now are teenagers, and they have babies on their own, and that's the third generation. And this is exactly what is needed to understand what we have no data about. There is no chance to obtain such data in populations that are mixed up. This is a unique population that lives within their own niche, and they marry each other, and they live there, and they don't go anywhere. So from my understanding, if the genes in the eggs and sperm are mutated or the chromosomes are or are damaged, you will get trisomies like Down syndrome or you will get genetic diseases which may be uh, dominant in the first generation like achondroplasia, uh, achondroplastic dwarfs, or you will develop recessive mutations for cystic fibrosis and diabetes and many other such uh, genetic abnormalities which won't show up for generations. Whereas, on the other hand, I thought that what you are seeing here with the microcephaly, the conjoint twins, the teratomas, the spinal cord defects and the like, that's teratogenesis. In other words, damage to a genetically, chromosomally normal embryo or moral or, or fetus. Um, Correct. So therefore, there are two ways to look at this. Obviously, there will be genetic and chromosomal abnormalities passed on generation to generation because of damage to eggs and sperm. But what you're seeing specifically in describing in this paper, I thought, was actually teratogenesis or damage to a normal fetus. That's correct. Actually, you see, you're 100% correct. Radiation has three effects. One is like a burn. In other words, it's a direct physical impact. It raises temperatures, it, it makes, let's say, a cell bubble. The next impact is teratogenesis, and that is it impacts rapidly developing tissues as an external interference factor. And that's the most important one, and that's the one we have been studying.